just call Jimmy Vin Diesel because the news is coming in fast and furious. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How about that? How about that new intro? I was freaked out. Even more 70s than before. I'm digging it. Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back in. How did they know? How did they know we peaked in, in the 70s? <laughs> hey, again, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. And uh, boy, we have a lot to talk about today. And we got to start with A-Day reactions because I know that's what everybody wants to talk about. And uh, Jimmy, 34-28 was the final score. And I, first thing I'm going to ask you, you briefly talk on the attendance because you were there. It's they say 74,000 people there. I think that's probably accurate. I mean, I, you know, the upper bowl looked a little sparse, but and maybe they're counting a few more thousand people than they should have. But I'm going to say plus or minus 74,000 probably ran in and out of there, which I appreciate. I'm sure Kalen DeBoer appreciates. He's never had that before. And then I want you to comment really quickly on the format because I know everybody wants to talk about the players. But the format, I'm going to tell you something. It grew on me. I hated it. At first, I was like, it's going to be 98 to nothing. This is stupid. But then I realized, oh, once the defense got some points going their way, I understood what was happening. And it ended up being a 34-28 game. Is actually a pretty cool way to do it. I don't want the real game to be that way, but I understood what the point was. Um, I thought, well, first of all, the attendance – I mean, I, I don't know. I don't work at a carnival. I, I can't count. <laughs> you know, I lose. You know, I start to lose count after I after I counted up to about two hundred people. I'll start to like wait, wait, wait. I think I already counted that guy twice. I I don't know. I, I, if they say it was 72, 74,000, I don't dispute it. I, I don't think that's crazy wrong. Uh, it might have been a little lower than that, maybe. It's just kind of hard to tell because there's so many people in and out. The one thing I will be adamant about is I spent a lot of time outside the stadium from like 11 to 1 uh, or 11 to, to 2 even, uh, walking outside the stadium, the strip. I went to Denny Chimes for the captain thing. It was – me and my group commented the whole time that it looked like a typical game day uh, in, in terms of how there could be that many people lined up to get in the stadium, that many people lined up at the Walk of Champions to watch the team walk in, a larger than normal crowd at Denny Chimes for the captain thing, and also a very crowded strip where most of the bars were pretty crowded. And Buffalo Phil's had a, had a line that was insane uh, downtown. So, and all of those things were happening at once. So, it seemed like I thought before I walked in there, Luke, that it was going to be similar to 2007. It wasn't inside, but outside it was. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't dispute the 72,000 number, but it, it may not have been. I don't know how they count it. Um, as far as the format, it was, you know, what I'd resolve my – I didn't pay that much attention to it, to be honest, in terms of the score. I'd resolve myself because of the format. I was watching players and plays. I, I watched players and plays. Uh, I, I didn't really look at the scoreboard much. Until you just said 34-28, I'd even forgotten uh, I, I focused on the plays and the players. Uh, my only thing I wish in the stadium, they'd done a better job on the down and distance, you know, a little more keeping us. I mean, you could watch <clears throat> on the field and see the chains, but they weren't really announcing it. Uh, but, but regardless, I, I thought it was typical of the scrimmages for those who don't get to go to those closed scrimmages. Uh, you got to go to one yesterday. I mean, in terms of format, they're very similar to the to the scrimmages. Also, quick shout out. Do want to thank Harvey Updike Lawn Care for taking care of the grass for yesterday. It was actually uh, better than the last few I weeks. I, heard. I know, but it was the source of Twitter funniness. Um, I'm sure. And look, it, I know that somebody said, yeah, the grass is doing it this way in case we host a home playoff game or whatever. I don't care. It's still a running joke among me and my friends in Alexander City, Alabama, who are mostly Auburn fans, because they're like, Alabama's grass usually looks like bump. And a lot of times it does this time of year, for yeah, real. Off season. Off season, it does. We're, and also, we're, we're the off season home of bad grass. 
But again, I, I would encourage it's the off season. Well, not everywhere bit. in Tuscaloosa is that way. Take it from a former SA. But uh, <laughs> all right, Jimmy, we got to get into some players. Um, so one thing I think that stood out to me, I, we def, let's let's save the second segment for quarterbacks because I, everybody loves that. The running backs. Look, we have been saying that we're loaded at running back, Alabama fans, and I think most people have been like, "Well, you don't know that," and I think that was very fair. To, for people to say, you don't know you're loaded. You think you're loaded because of the rankingness of these guys. Okay, I'm going to say definitively, without a doubt, we are loaded at running back. Uh, Jam Miller looked exceptional. Um, Justice Haynes, though he didn't get that many carries, I, for some reason I thought he got a lot more carries than he did. Statistically, he didn't get – he got maybe four carries or something. It wasn't many. Okay. Um, but when he did – when he was out there, for whatever reason I noticed him a lot, Richard Young – um, again, I thought there was a clear defining, okay, yeah, Jam Miller, Justice Haynes, then Richard Young. I think now it's Jam Miller, Justice Haynes, Richard Young, all in a group. And here's hoping we can do sort of that, um, you know, a 2010-esque, you know, uh, cycling in running backs and you don't miss a beat from those three. And we didn't even, you know, Kevin Riley wasn't even out there. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm pretty fired up about the running backs, Jimmy. When I looked at the stats, I would, you know, the post game stats. I, I, I dispute the post game stats more than I dispute the attendance number. I, I, I thought that all the backs ran for more yards than they did, and I guess I felt that way because I was impressed by all of them. I was impressed by Jam, impressed by Justice, definitely impressed by Richard Young, who I thought looked, wow, he's ready to play SEC football, and even Daniel Hill in a brief appearance I thought was was impressive he made one really good catch uh on a ball that I thought was kind of a difficult catch for her back uh, uh, Alabama's running back situation is fantastic uh, I'm glad that Jam showed out because I think Justice had, had won a lot of headlines for his play throughout the spring so it's nice to me that Jam Miller did at the end but to remind everyone uh, of why me and Luke we call it the Justice and Jam show not just the Justice show uh this is why we've been saying the Justice and Jam Show, or the Jam and Justice Show, they're both good, one A and one B, and uh, and Richard Young, I thought made a case that he he belongs in that group. Alabama's an excellent shape at running back, Luke. I won't be surprised in the fall if Alabama sort of builds it around the running back position. Makes all the sense in the world. And they should. And then when you couple that with the fact that, yes, I know that um, Jalen Milrow had a couple of runs. They probably could have gone for more. But when you couple the fact that Jalen Milrow is sort of a running back slash quarterback, um, man, the running game ought to be awesome. Now, I understand it's a spring game, and maybe the defense looked bad. That's what that's what naysayers will say. The defense didn't look good. I understand. I'll say this, though. The defense got better as the day went on. I think they had to find their footing. And I also think this, beyond the shadow of a doubt, call me a homer if you want. I think Kalen DeBoer really wanted to show people – my offense is good. I'm good at this. And this is who I am. And it would have been a bad look if Alabama's defense had outshone the offense. It would have been like, um, I thought he was an offensive guru, you know? So I'm glad to know the offense looked better. And maybe I'm just picking stuff out of the air because I saw you wince when I said that. Well, I mean, that wasn't a, a wince as, as it relates to what you said. I was it gas? <laughs> at my age, who knows? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, you're I, to confirm. I think that look uh, the format, and by the format, I'm not talking about the scoring system. By format, I meant, I mean, in terms of the offenses and defenses, the formations, the schemes, the play calls, that felt very limited to me. It seemed like first and foremost, their goal was, hey, we're not even going to give Western Kentucky a glimpse of August 31st. Agreed. We're going to do our most basic, bare-bones stuff. And with that in mind, my guess is, for whatever reason, that seemed to favor the offense. I really don't think the offense is that much better than the defense. I just think that how they decided to call the plays and what schemes and what cover – cover one, cover two, cover three, no blitzing, no stunts and loops. And, 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 and you know, I, I think they kept it really simple, seemed to favor the offense. 
All right, Jimmy, when we come back, let's get into those quarterbacks. And also, let's talk about a wide receiver who, uh, yeah, I'm digging this cat. Right now, though, got to tell you about LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board, dude. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who are actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Oh, I love that new tagline they just gave me. I dig that. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats, they might not have the time or resources to hire. So look, join the 2.5 million small businesses that are using LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. To post your job for free, terms and conditions, yeah, they're going to apply. Quarterbacks. All right. I'm 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 excited now. Um, I think if anybody had doubts about uh, Jalen Milrow, they should – maybe you're not doubt-free, but you should feel better. He had some passes that were really, really nice. Now – how much of this can we attribute to the new staff coming in and just having a spring to work with him? I don't know. His pass to uh, Jam Miller uh, that was on the other that, that was across the field yeah. um, that, that led to a big time play. And Jam Miller's ability to catch it, by the way, I mean, it's just beautiful. Uh, his deep pass to Jeremy Bernard. That was awesome. Really sweet. Um, I just thought I thought Milro looked in control. He looked great. Granted, again, I understand maybe the defense didn't have the opportunity to give him the pressure that may force him into worse throws. I understand that. But let's start somewhere and let's be positive. I, I mean, again, there are people who still aren't Jalen Milrow believers. I understand that. I get it. He, he has given people some reason to doubt him at times. But, boy, if you don't feel better after this spring game, I just don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah, I, I was very uh, – I thought it was a very positive performance from Jalen. Uh, you know, again, I don't care about the numbers. I care about how they look. Uh, I thought he looked great. The throw to Jeremy Bernard was just a thing of beauty. It was it was, it was perfect. And effortless. Uh, yes, yes. I, I thought, like Luke said, I like how uh, Luke said, he, he looked in command. He looked in command of the field. He didn't look lost whatsoever. Uh, again, a little handicap. You put that black jersey on Milrow, it's a little bit about like putting that chain of, of kryptonite around, you know, Superman's neck. Uh, you know, Milrow's at his best when he can use his legs. Not really a legs day, you know, with the quarterbacks with that format and black jersey. So I thought Milrow was really good. I thought Ty Simpson showed what he had reportedly shown the entire spring. Ty Simpson's ready to be a starting quarterback in this league. Uh, I'm very adamant that that's true. Uh, Dylan Lonergan, I thought, was surprisingly good in the sense that just hadn't heard much about Dylan this spring as opposed to last spring. But I thought Dylan Lonergan looked ready or close to ready to play. And Austin Mack, you know, <clears throat> disappointing is, is a terrible word to use, but but I'm glad everybody got to see the size uh, I think he flashed, you know, some of the talent. Austin looked a little like not ready, but shock of all shocks, he's eight, he's 18. He's supposed to be in high school right now. I know he was on Washington's team last fall, but he's supposed to be finishing up the 12th grade right now. I don't care if Austin Mack still looks not ready this fall. It doesn't matter. He's not supposed to be, but I think the raw tools that Austin Mack has are incredible. I just think it's going to take a minute for him to learn how to play fast. And 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 that's that's the deal with him. But Milrow, Simpson, Lonergan in the bullpen, got a great nice. QB room. Nice. Now, it, it, And this is all we'll say about it because there's no reason to harp on the guy that's probably fourth string right now. Austin Mack, I think it's fair to say he's he's – He's disappointing relative to the hype that we had coming in for him. Okay. Cause we saw, we saw some 
quick clips that the university puts out that are all highlights from different practices. And he was throwing darts. Well, I mean, they picked out his best passes. So he his first couple of passes like were worm burners and um, I, th they weren't pretty. But I'm with you. I'm OK with that. Let Austin Mack grow. That's fine. The bigger issue or, or not issue is, uh, boy, the bigger news story is that um, Milrow looked good, L looked great, really. Milrow looked great. And also you with your point on the black jersey is uh, certainly valid. It hinders him, but it also helps him in the sense that he knows now, OK, I can't really run. So I've got to figure this out back here. And I think that helps him. So, I mean, I think it's you know, it works both ways because I don't want him to rely on his feet as yeah. much. Yes, we all want him to run. It helps us feet. training. It helps us okay. training and what he needs to work on. Correct. But it, it it hinders what would overall be his statistical production for a game. You know what it is? It is Michael Jordan put tying his right hand behind his back in sixth grade learning to dribble and shoot left-handed. You know, it, it's sometimes you – Yes, it sucks right now, but it helps you long term, and I think that's what it is. Although I probably shouldn't compare Michael Jordan to Jalen Milrow just yet. I feel I hear you. Um, now let's go to wide receivers for a second. First of all, Jeremy Bernard, dude is a dude. Okay, <laughs> again, not trying to freak out over a day, but I'm freaking out over a day a little bit. Jeremy Bernard is a, is a dude. He's he looked jacked, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah he's a big kid. Rock. People think of him as a punt returner because he did that at Washington. But whenever we think punt returner in our heads, we think little guy. There's nothing little about Jeremy Bernard. He's a above average sized wide receiver, I think, above average or right at average or above it. I mean, he's he's put together and and he's, he's great. He should he'll, he'll probably be wide receiver one on this team. I mean, in terms of who's who's going to catch the most balls this fall, probably Jeremy. Uh, Man, great after the catch, too. It's not just gaining separation and getting open. Uh, I think it's after the catch, uh, but he'll be a big deal. It's just kind of funny to me that his name is Jeremy, and uh, there's a kid from Germany on the team. It's a little confusing to some. Uh, not to many. Not Maybe to you. you. Maybe just um, me. But I do, you know, I, I told you this story a long time ago when I used to play Sega with my buddy Tommy at the SAE house. Um, that uh, sure. Uh, Sherman Williams, when he we always gave everybody a nickname back when we played the old Sega NCAA games. By the way, the new NCAA games coming out, and even as a 51 year old man, I'm going to go buy it. I don't even know if I have the platform to use it, but I'm going to buy it just for nostalgia. And so we used to have nicknames for everybody, and his for Sherman Williams was Sherm the Germ, making people sick. Now we got Jeremy Bernard, Jeremy Bernard, making people sick. I like that. I'm going to use that from now on. I'm now using. Okay. Okay, you taught me. I'm now using it. I don't know that I'll sing it. I might. So you got to. God sing bless it. the people. God bless the people that sit around me in the stadium. Oh, I just Jeremy Bernard. If you are listening, and we know you are, thank you're welcome for sure. the T-shirt idea. Jeremy Bernard making people sick. So, uh, the other wide receivers, but I don't. Know it gets funnier. Every, it gets funnier every time. <laughs> I don't know that. Um, any other wide receivers really – I mean, Kobe Prentice had a nice catch that I remember. He had a big spring. I do know once I'm inside scoop, the staff is crazy about Kobe Prentice. I mean, they, they, they think he's really good. Kendrick Cole Law, Adams. too. Kendrick Cole, Cole, Cole Adams. Adams. Yeah. A Cole Solid. Adams fighting was – if if Cole Adams isn't Hunter Renfro, have you ever seen these two in the same room at the same time? <laughs> they, they're the same Cole. person. One thing about Cole that should be surprising to people don't really – the dude is fast. Cole can really run. And uh, I think he's just going to be a, one of these. He's never going to be wide receiver one, but what he's going to be is on the field. You know what I mean? I mean, he's going to help the team. He He's a good player. Uh, I think he can really help Alabama. Is he going to be wide receiver no, one? No, but probably wide receiver five, six. You're going to play seven guys play. probably. He's, he's going to play. play. He's going to play and help us. I Would have played last fall maybe had he not got hurt. I was I'm telling people that all the time. They didn't believe me. I'm going to give you some news that you only get here on Locked on Bama unless you follow me on Twitter when I posted something about Cole Adams. Uh, my buddy, Wade Kaiser, um, yeah. super dude, by the way. I know Wade Kaiser, former Alabama basketball player, super guy. 
Um, I, I said, uh, as my daughter calls me right in the middle of something important, dang you, daughter. Um, but uh, he says he tweets back at me. I had tweeted out so far at A Day, I'm digging the improvement of QBs and you know some other things. And I put Cole Adams with a lot of exclamation points. Wade Kaiser says Cole Adams' dad was my next door neighbor when I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma until I was 10 years old. That has nothing to do with anything. It's just a small that's world. That's a cool small, that's a cool small world blurb there. Yeah, it is. I like so it. He was destined to be at Alabama. I mean, that's the bottom line. Yeah, good player, good player, and he's going to help us. And hey, let's 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 not let's not pretend that this summer on this show for everybody listening today, and y'all want to tune in all summer long. By the way, me and Luke don't stop. We'll do five shows a week all through the summer, and let's just go ahead and call it the summer of Ryan Williams, because we're going to spend right. the whole we're going to spend the whole summer talking about Ryan. We are going to be like a Bravo channel for Ryan Williams, the way we do things. The real fanboys of Ryan Williams this summer. That's what we're going to do. Ryan right. Williams, the one who makes you sick. <laughs> now we got to come up with something better. For him. <laughs> he needs a, honestly, his name's pretty generic. We're going to have to do something. <laughs> anyway, all right. I got to get to FanDuel. Ah, FanDuel is playoff time in NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get 150 smacks in bonus bets. Get Ron Teed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, it's secure, and it's easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel is America's Number one sports book. All right. So quickly, Alabama got a commitment uh, this past weekend mm -hmm. and uh, from a wide receiver that they have been coveting. And that, by the way, if you hadn't seen this film, you should go look at it. Dude's pretty exciting out of New Jersey. I'm a big, big, big fan. And uh, man, don't, don't pay any attention to those. If anyone right now, wants to utter the words about his rankings before you do so stop yourself and just go watch that tape you don't have to be a forrest davis to break down that tape this guy he's the all-time leading receiver in south new jersey history and he hasn't even played his senior year uh i i think he's rankings wise the most underrated kid but he's not underrated because rankings are just in the first quarter we're not to the final rankings but I, I, I think he's going to be very highly rated But by the time it's over. Awesome speed, playmaker, checks every box, ball skills, offered by the Saban staff, re-offered by the DeBoer staff. Really is only – he only went to one camp last summer, Alabama's, even though he's from New Jersey. Hey, we, we signed a kid from New Jersey named Minka Fitzpatrick not too long ago. Things worked out. He's all right. Things worked out with that guy. Uh, I, I, think, I think Brooks is – is big time. I, I'm a I'm a big big fan. Lots or Brooks is his name, by the way. I was trying to give you an opening, like I described him, then I was going to let you burst the name out there, and you forgot to say his name. But Lots oh. or Brooks is his name, right? Lot is it Lotzier? I've been going Lotzier because his, Lot his name is spelled like uh, Eric Zier. Remember Eric Zier, the quarterback from Georgia? But did did Eric Zier Wasn't spell that? his name like Z E I E R? Z E I R. It was just four letters. Yeah, it's just four letters, Z-E-I-R. Wow. Okay. And, and pronounce it Zire, and that's how Lotzire has his name. Who knows? Maybe they're related. Oh, I think we need to look into that. That's that's. <laughs> let, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get Wade. Because, no, you're wrong, by the way. It is Z-E-I-E-R. I just Googled it. Z. So I, I, considering I, I, they, they spell and pronounce their names differently, <laughs> <laughs> I would say Simpsons. they're probably not related. The, um, the Simpsons. Yes, Luke with the Simpsons line. You, yeah, by one the way, um, one of the dudes probably not related because they spell and pronounce their last names differently. Uh, I, one of the dudes that I met out at the Final Four said, "You know what I really love that you do sometimes is you have Simpsons references." And I'm like, "It's thank you because like you're the only person who appreciates besides Jimmy." <laughs> I get well. The funny thing is, and that's so, so like us is the Simpsons has been on for forty years or something. 
I haven't seen The Simpsons in 20 years, but I constantly quote The Simpsons from my teenage and college years. Yeah, because those were the good ones. I mean, they're still <laughs> running and got more power to them. I'm pro Simpson, but I don't watch it. I'm pro D Simpsons, I should say. Not, is, not a pro are the new Simpsons as funny as like Family Guy and American Dad? I don't think so. I've tried watching them. It's just different. I think the Sim, you know, some things happen with The Simpsons uh, in a in sort of a PC manner that I think like it used to be that I, they used to not worry about offending anybody. Now they even worry about offending anybody in some other ways. And Family Guy doesn't worry about it. They're just funny. And if you can't take a joke, don't watch it. And but, the show's been on 40 years. And isn't it, I mean, isn't it a little bit stretching cr cr uh, credibility that Bart Simpson is still in the fifth <laughs> grade or whatever it is? It's a little bit. He hasn't uh, aged. The show is 40 and, the, and no one in the family has aged. Homer okay. would Homer would literally be dead like he, oh, two, two decades ago. He should have been dead when he fought Dredrick Tatum in that uh, boxing <laughs> episode. But it, Alabama should also be getting a commitment uh, today, I think around 2 o'clock, from Jaden uh, – oh, my gosh. Harmon. Harmon, Harmon. yes. I'm, I'm pronouncing just, this one correctly. Good work. That, uh, one, uh, that one I've got. And uh, BOL prediction, Alabama. Well, it wouldn't um, be a weekend if Alabama didn't get a commitment from a linebacker, right? It is a lot of linebacker. I mean, it is. I mean, and people are like, well, what what do they do? I mean, first of all, they know what they're doing. Secondly, uh, Alabama's going to lose at least three inside linebackers after this year. So you needed to sign three. I mean, absolutely needed three. If you had Harmon, I think that's five, you know, and uh, so so now that's okay. That's that's a lot. Now, but and that's probably it. I think they'll continue to recruit a kid like Ty Jackson because it don't matter that you have five. Yeah, you awesome. take you take Ty Jackson if you had eight, and he'd be the ninth guy. I mean, you, you're so they'll continue to recruit him. He's just too good not to. And then let's just see what happens with those numbers. You know, they're they as of we speak in terms of guys coming back and the commitments that we got. You're talking about ten inside linebackers on next year's team right now. Eight is like a really good number. So it's not crazy to have 10 when eight is ideal. So uh, no one needs to overreact to that. Uh, but, hey, you know, you just sign good players. Jaden Harmon's really good, by the way. I, I think he'd probably be the second best. Of the inside linebackers, if there's five of them. I'd put Duke Johnson number one. I'd probably put Jaden Harmon two. Duke Johnson, by the way, did tweet out something yesterday just to give you another, you know, vote of confidence for this cat. He said, yeah, after Lotzer Brooks committed yesterday, he said, and we got another one coming tomorrow, roll tide. You know, we roll them or something. So, I mean, Duke Johnson may have just spoiled the surprise unless it's somebody besides Jaden Harmon, which would be a surprise. So, ironically. Like, hey, Duke, give these kids their moment. <laughs> Shouldn't you know? Uh, all right. And we're not going to talk about it right now. I do want to make people aware. We are aware that Chris Youngblood is transferring mm -hmm. from South Florida to Alabama. Very and – this is a this is a big pickup to me. He was look, he was like co offense co player of the year for his conference, I think. Um, yeah, and that's a good that's American athletic. And he's conference. from it's not one of those conferences we can't name. Yeah, originally he didn't play high school ball in Tuscaloosa. He had moved to Atlanta. Yeah, I think before high school, so he played a high school at East Coletta, I think, over there. And he's jacked. But, by the way, he's jacked. He looks like a football player. I mean, in terms of he looks, you know, 6'4", 220, like a linebacker, but a great shooter. What I, I've noticed about Chris Youngblood, why I'm excited about him, is two two numbers, 40% three-point shooter. That's the magic number of greatness, 40%. That's him. Uh, also over an 80% free throw shooter. So this kid is just a natural shooter, a four-year starter in college, started out at Kennesaw, uh, but in his four years of playing college basketball, he's been a starter all the way through, which is a great sign. He's always one of the – in other words, he's always one of the best players on his team. Conference player of the year. You no know who else was conference player of the year on his on his team a, lot, a couple years ago? Aaron Estrada. Mm -hmm. uh, Grant Nelson. I mean, looks like we've got a little theme going here, and, and these, these things have sort of worked out. They do, and I'm a big fan of his. We'll talk about him – Maybe on tomorrow's podcast, but tomorrow could be crazy because of the football transfer portal opening, uh, which means Tony Mitchell rumors abound. Uh, Tony keeps saying it's not happening, uh, apparently on social media. But I, I mean, I think that's what he probably should say we've right had, now. Yeah, we've had sources indicate that he's entering the portal and now he says he's not. 
I don't know what to make of it. I'm, I'm just, I, I don't know. But, you know, maybe he wants to make the announcement. Yeah, it, I don't know. Let's just wait know. and see on him. And honestly, he he may have been passed up. I, I want Tony Mitchell to succeed. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying it that did. it. this is, boy, it feels like he's been running in mud a little bit ever since. It'll be a real shame if it doesn't work out. Now, he's had a hamstring issue this whole spring. I mean, yeah. people you know he's had a ham, hamstring strip on his leg. The whole the whole spring long, but hey, let's say uh, first team at this. You know, Tony Mitchell's playing safety. The safety group yesterday, the first team was Keon Sab, Malachi Moore, and Devonte Smith at Husky. Yeah, and then the second team was uh, Bray Hubbard and Peyton Woodyard at safety with with, with, with with Red Morgan at uh at, who who looked great as usual uh at second team Husky, which we predicted by the way at Bol and on the show. I was telling people all along I was excited about Red, and very excited about Red, but Devonte Smith, uh, you know, is a veteran that they're excited about. Devonte just been banged up as usual, uh, which allowed Red to get all those first team reps, which is great because it only helped Red. And Red's going to be a dude even this fall, even even if he's a two. He's probably going to be a major player on special teams. Uh, I thought overall the secondary intriguing, but I, I won't be surprised if Alabama tries to find a, a corner uh, in the portal that opens tomorrow. Ish. Gavin Cosby also tomorrow. in the portal. Absolutely no shock at all. And look, we we can't talk about it anymore because they're going to tell me I, I should be keeping these podcasts below thirty minutes. We're already at thirty one. But um. And then one other thing, and we we have to talk about this tomorrow, Jimmy. We didn't get to it today. Justin Okoronkwo, holy cow. It's like somebody said, okay, Superman, get out there and play football. Oh, I don't know anything about football. Okay, just for now, see ball, get ball. And that's all he did. He might have been the most impressive defensive player on the field. This he was very so productive. Very productive. I told people don't do, people would make too big a deal of he's got to learn to play. It's not. It's not like me learning the chart of the elements. Yeah. I mean that's going to take a while. <laughs> I mean th- some of these super athletes. It's football, and I'm not saying it's simple. It's not simple, but I'm also saying it doesn't take a, a doctoral degree. Yeah. In nuclear physics to learn how to play football, and and just and and Justin played football in Germany. As a matter of fact, he was playing football in Germany against adults. So, you know, let's uh, – I'm, I'm not surprised that he's doing well. Well, I mean, it, it is like telling Superman – because he looked like Superman out there. And he was like, well, we don't even have football on Krypton. We play something <laughs> called Krypton Ball. Well, this is Krypton Ball. But uh, you just go <laughs> – I wonder if Superman did play a sport on Krypton. Yeah. See, All Lex right. Luthor, go get Luke. Lex Luthor was the yeah. game plan with Okoronkwo for Luke. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for today's podcast, man. I've told you there's a ton of news and we got more for tomorrow. Hey, this is beautiful for us. All the content in the world, baby. And the transfer portal opens tomorrow, but we ain't transferring anymore. Tune in. We'll be tuned in. Roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.